start this morning's sermon. With the following statements. 25 years ago, everyone wanted to have children. Today, many people are afraid of having children. And those who want to have, they just want to have few. Unlike people that want to have plenty in those days. 25 years ago, children respected their parents. Now, parents have to respect their children. 25 years ago, marriage was easy. But divorce was difficult. Nowadays, it is difficult to get married. But divorce is so easy. 25 years ago, we got to know all our neighbors. Now we are strangers to our neighbors. 25 years ago, people had a lot to eat because they needed the energy to work hard. Now we are afraid to eat fatty foods for fear of cholesterol. 25 years ago, villagers were flocking to the city to find jobs. Now the town people are fleeing from stress in the city to find peace in the village. 25 years ago, everyone wanted to be fat to look happy. Nowadays, everyone diets to look healthy. 25 years ago, rich people pretended to be poor. Now the poor are pretending to be rich. 25 years ago, only one person worked to support the whole family. Now, all have to work to support one child. 25 years ago, people love to study and read books. Now, people love to update Facebook and read their WhatsApp messages. This is the reality of our present time. 25 years ago, when you go to church, you will know you have been to the presence of God. Today, when you go to church, there is no reflection that you have actually been in church for most ministries. 25 years ago, when we hear altar call concerning our sin, we run out from our seats crying and asking God for mercy. Today, when we hear altar call of sins that is obvious that we are guilty of, we sit down undisturbed. 25 years ago, there was fear of God. Today, there is no fear of God. 25 years ago, the joy of a servant of God is the salvation of the means of the of the congregation that they are saved and they are working in the Lord. Today, for many servants of God, the joy happens to be only the money that they are getting and not about the souls or the salvation of the congregation. The truth of the matter, beloved, is this, that anyone who is a servant of God today, a true servant of God today, should find it difficult to be happy. Seeing what the church has turned to, any adult who thinks and who is conscious of what is happening today should not be happy about what is going on when they compare what happened during their time to what they are seeing now. One elderly person at 80 something said, Ah, that God should have taken him. That because he never believed that a day will come that he will see Nigeria this horrible. People who are of the age of 65, 70, even some 50s above, who have seen the goodness of Nigeria and seen what is happening right now. And you, you still derive joy and all you think about is party and enjoyment. 
you are not thinking. Because if you are truly thinking and you see what is going on right now, you ought to be concerned, you ought to be crying that not in your lifetime would you have imagined that things would get to this stage. But then why have things suddenly become this bad? Is it that the God of those days is no longer alive? Is that the God that made things wonderful those days cannot make it happen again? The answer is no. God is still very much the same. His principles are still very much the same. The problem is that it's people who have moved away from him. And now if we will return to him, God is ready to bless us again. That's why this morning we are looking at what I call 12 baskets of blessing. There are 12 buckets of blessings that I believe in the name that's above every other name somebody here will go home with today. Yeah. If that person is you, jump up and shout hallelujah. Yeah. Turn with me to John chapter 6 verse 5 to 13. John chapter 6, verse 5 to 13. Sorry, I forgot to mention. Those days when you miss one Sunday service, it will be as if you have missed the whole year out. Today, I can see faces. Uh, I see them there. Mm, they're there. They're looking at the other side. I'm talking to you. They're, looking at the other. they're bending. Maybe we don't see them once in a month in church. Are you following me? We, we are not moved for not being in church. I tell you, you wonder, what would I be doing if I'm not in church? What would I be saying? What excuse would I give? We find the presence of God a delight. We just want to be in God's presence. Okay, let's go back. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming towards him. Thank you, Daddy. Glory be to the name of God. I won't go to church because my husband is not around. When you get to heaven, you will stand before God alone. Joshua had a revelation of heaven during the week. He woke up crying. He said, everybody lined up on a straight row. On a straight row before the judgment truth of the Almighty. He said, God came down and he, he announced a name. He, he announced some names. He said, the names he announced, those ones that are straight to hell. No, there, there was one, don't even wait for questioning. Your own case, we don't even need to hell. Just go straight to hell. Go. He said, the interesting thing is that what he noticed was that people were standing alone. And it was as if nobody recognized each other. On that, in, on, the, on, the, on the row, everybody that was there, we are on their own. There was something like my wife, my brother, my son. Nobody recognized each other. Everybody was on their own. Everybody is on their own. So what am I trying to say? Uh, my husband, my wife, he didn't come to church, so I won't go to church. I'm waiting for the day we'll come together. You will not go before the judgment throne together. Then Jesus lifted up his voice and seen a great multitude coming towards him. He said to Philip, where shall we buy bread that these people may eat? But, it's, but this is said to test him. For he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a lad here who has five belly loaves and two small fish, but what are they among two, so many? Then Jesus said, make the people sit down. 
Now there was much grass in the place. So then they sat down in number by 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given thanks, he distributed them to disciples. And disciples to those sitting down, and likewise of the fish, as much as they wanted. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Therefore they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with fragments of five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten. Glory be to the name of God. This is one story that everybody knows, I mean many of you know very well. But today we want to look at it from four different angles. First of all, we want to look at the story very briefly. Then we look at the 12 baskets of blessings that this small boy who shared this much, who shared his lunch, received. Because the boy who shared his lunch, who offered his lunch to Jesus for the people was the one that went home with the 12 baskets of blessing. Let me just quickly tell you something. If there is a need in church now, and the need affects everyone, provision for everyone, let's say uh, we want to do Thanksgiving, or we want to do or any celebration or something that require feasting or anything, or something that, that, that would require provision for everybody. The poorest person among us can become rich through that if the person is wise. By offering the little you have, and you allow God to use it to be a blessing to others. By the time the multiplication of God comes to that little, there will be a leftover. The leftover will be shared among those who make the contribution. Every time we want to do Thanksgiving, they say, ah, let's take a contribution. What are you going to contribute towards this? Contribute towards that. What you don't understand is that the blessings of God comes upon those provisions. And when the blessings of God come upon it, it becomes more than what we have contributed. Am I making sense to you? By percentage based on the given, the Lord will distribute to those who gave. So, the poor one among them will become rich. And the rich one will become what? Richer. And the one who failed to give will only eat that one and that's it. I just want to teach you that simple principle before we go on. For those who like to be stingy when it comes to the things of God. The first thing in this story Is that just the way we need to understand that God knows the beginning from the end. It was recorded in verse 6 that Jesus already knew what he would do. Even before he asked his disciples how they would fill the multitude, he knew what he would do. The King James Version of the Bible tells us in Acts 15, 18, known unto God all his works from the beginning of the world. God is able to meet with our needs without the help of anybody. He is able to meet with my needs without anybody's help. He is able to meet with your needs without anybody's help. When he requests for your help in meeting my needs, it's because he wants to bless you. 
Are you following me this morning? When he asks you to do something for me to meet my need, it's simply because what? He wants to bless you. Because he himself is capable of doing it without your help. Am I making sense to you? We need to have that understanding this morning. Revelations 1.8 tells us that God is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. What this means, beloved, is that before you decided to come here today, God already knew you would be coming. Even before you were born, he knew you were going to hear this sermon today, March 1st, 2020. That is why, beloved, I can confidently say that long before now, because today, God has chosen to bless someone with 12 baskets of blessing, it has been recorded in history that today will mark the beginning of the turning point in your life. If you believe that is you, shout hallelujah. Your coming here today is not by accident. The only thing I pray for you is that you will, God will open your eyes and give you understanding of what you need to do so that you don't miss that 12 basket of blessing. Because the provision is there now. The second thing to note in this story is that God knows your problems before you know them. And even before the problems manifest in your life. And in knowing what he does, he has already prepared the solution. We are told in 19 verses 1 and 2 that from everlasting to everlasting, God is God. We are also told that even before the mountains were born, he had already been God. So, beloved, even before that mountain in your life, that problem ever came to be, he was God. And because he knows the foundation of your problems, he is more than able, not only to solve the problem, but to solve it from the very foundation of the problem. I believe today that someone in this assembly We'll be going home today problem free in Jesus' name. The third thing to learn from this story is that God can use what you already have to give you that thing that you are in need of. He did it for the widow of Zarephath. He did it also for the widow in 2 Kings chapter 4. He can take what you already have and turn it around to give you what you are looking for. In 2 Kings 4, 1 to 7, we see the story of the widow who came to the man of God asking for help in paying her debt. The man of God simply told her there was something that you have in your house and to which she confirmed yes. She had a pot of oil. And that was what God used to turn her life around. Even where you are seated now, the miracle that once God wants to give you today is already in your possession in Jesus' name. What God will use to give you that miracle is already with you in the name of Jesus. It will be in your pocket. It may be in your bag. It may be in your car. It may be in your office. It may be in your home. But I know that you already have it already in Jesus' name. The key, however, beloved, is this. You must first be willing to surrender it to God 
so that God can turn it to what you need. In 2 Kings, 1 Kings 17, 8 to 16, we were told of the widow who had only one meal left for her and her son. But God sent his prophet to her to feed him. Feed my prophet with this your last meal and see how I will meet your own need as well. After she met the prophet of God's need, even though she told him the situation on ground was not good, the prophet acted as if he didn't care by insisting that she gave him that her last meal. She was faced with a choice either to take a chance to give the prophet the food or to take care of her own immediate need first. My prayer for each and every one of you here this morning is that you will be willing to satisfy God first every day of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. The next point to learn from this story is that our God is always more than enough. I did not say sometimes it's more than enough. I say always more than enough. What this means, beloved, is that by the time he has finished solving your problem, there will always be an extra in the area of 12 baskets of blessings waiting. Just like the case of this young boy who left the house with his lunch. Five loaves of belly bread and two small fish. He surrendered this little lunch to Jesus so that Jesus could use it to perform a miracle that had never been seen before. Jesus used that small lunch to feed over 5,000 men and women and children and yet there was 12 basket, food baskets of bread and fish led to her. Why? Because our God is the El Shaddai. The God who is more than enough, the one who can do any and everything. And as the elders will say, the seed that never runs dry. He is able to do more than you can think or ask for, so says his word. And that's why when he started pouring out oil on his head, David said in Psalm 23 verse 5, that my cup overflows. God will have smiled at that boy when he gave him that little fish and the bread. God must have said, ah, you this boy, you are lucky today because your blessings have only just started. Very soon, as someone responds to God's divine instruction this morning, Someone, that person will be telling God very soon, God, Daddy, these blessings you are giving me is too much. And God in return will smile and say, my child, I have only just started with you. You have not seen anything yet. If that person is you, jump up and shout hallelujah. Okay, if that person is you, jump up and shout the loudest hallelujah. The fifth point you need to learn from this story is very simple. God is a just God. It's as simple as that. Many years ago, as children, we were taught this story. And when they asked us, what happened to the remaining 12 baskets? Some people said there were 12 disciples, so they took it one by one. One of the children there now asked that since Jesus was the one who performed the miracle, should he not have gotten the last two or three baskets? That was when the Sunday school teacher who taught us then about the law of seed and harvest told us 
that those baskets would have been given to the small boy who gave his meal to be shared according to the law of seed and harvest. That he was one that brought the little that Jesus turned to abundance. So if, there's, if there was anyone that should receive what is left, it should be that boy. Ecclesiastes 1 verse 7 tells us that all rivers run into the sea and yet the sea is never full. Because where the rivers come from, that's where it will return. It was the boy who gave the fish and the bread. So it is only right for him to get the extra. God is God. And he would never take the harvest of one person to give to another person. When they call for offering, while some of us will be rejoicing because we know the implications and the consequences of giving, some people who have no understanding will frown. One thing you must realize, beloved, and appreciate is that every time we pray on the offering and ask for the blessings of God on the offering, we are praying for multiplication. Am I making sense to you? But when the multiplication starts taking place, it's going to come according to our giving. Are you following me? According to how much God respects our offering. Not just by the amount, but the respect he has for the offering. Because there are some offerings that may be big, but God may not have respect for it because it is not sacrificial. It is not as much as what he expects you to give. In fact, it may be an insult to him. And yet, there might be someone that will give so little that God will have great respect for because he has given in proportion to the way God has blessed him or her. So, when the, multiple, when the, when the, when the blessings come, the interest from those blessings of that giving, when it's coming, God is going to give to everyone according to their performance. Are you following me this evening, morning? You need to realize, beloved, that God is just. A man will always reap what he has sown. I used to hear from people who are struggling and they would say, if I have money, I won't even allow anybody to do it. I'll just do everything myself. What happens to the little you have? Are you following me? What happens to the little that you have? Now let's look at this boy. The 12 blessings that he got, what does it translate to? The 12 blessings we get this morning, what does it translate to in your life? Number one, he got divine attention. Just for the mere fact that he wanted to share his lunch, they brought him face to face with Jesus. There is a kind of offering that you give to God that will attract divine attention that will make God to notice you. Am I making sense to you? This boy got divine attention. Now, we know from the Bible that everyone that got Jesus divine attention never remained the same. He was an ordinary boy in the crowd. Now he was standing face to face with the son of the king of kings. Nobody knew him before he got there. But now there he was, receiving divine attention. Up until the time that Peter met with Jesus, and Jesus entered his boat, nobody knew Peter. But after he came in contact with Jesus, right from that moment, 
the story of the life of Peter changed. Everybody knew and heard of him. I'm trusting God that someone here this morning will get divine attention today from our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you believe you are going to receive his divine attention, shout hallelujah. Now, divine attention gives you a personal miracle. Not joint miracle, but miracle that is for you and specifically for you alone. In John chapter 5, 1 to 9, we are told of the multitude at the pool of Bethsaida. A multitude of people who were sick, looking for healing. There were plenty of them. But only one person from the multitude got divine attention. And that was the only one that got healed that day. I don't know what your problem is today. And I know that every one of us here today has come with ease or our own problem. Some, some are multiple. But I believe today that as you receive divine attention from Jesus today, whatever your own problem will be, it will become a thing of the past in Jesus' name. That's why you must struggle to receive his attention today. Many people are calling on him, but only one God is attention. Whatever you need to do to get his attention today, the grace shall be given to you to get it in Jesus' name. Amen. Secondly, this boy got divine approval. What the second basket of blessing represents in his life. Divine approval. Jesus must have smiled at him and even thanked him for his willingness to want to share his lunch. I'm praying for someone here today that the heavens will smile on you today. This week, Jesus will smile on you. Everywhere you turn to, you will find favor in Jesus' mighty name. If you are hearing me, shout hallelujah. Divine approval is crucial to a life of peace. If you want peace, you need divine approval. We are told in Proverbs 16 verse 7 that when a man's way is pleasing to God, when a man's ways are pleasing to God, the Almighty will cause even his enemies to be at peace with him. The truth, beloved, is that while it is good to fight your enemies and defeat them, it is much better and a lot easier when your enemies are ignoring you and your life. Oh, leave him alone. Just leave, let him go. Someone here today, from today, your enemies will forget about you. They will no longer bother about you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thirdly, the boy obtained divine favor. The third basket represents divine favor. What exactly is divine favor? What is it that classifies someone as having divine favor? Divine favor is when God looks at your direction. And chooses to smile at you. Like I said earlier, I pray that the Lord God Almighty will smile on somebody today in the name of Jesus. When God looks at you and chooses to smile, do you know what happens? At that moment in time, your enemy will start panicking because they know the next thing that will happen is that all that they have been mocking you about will suddenly become a thing of the past. Suddenly the problems in your life will disappear. The smile of Jesus, what it means is that you cannot begin to relax that all is well. That's why I'm praying that today, God will smile on you today in Jesus' name. Divine favor is crucial. 
for promotion. When God smiles at your promotion, when God smiles at you, your promotion will begin, will, will start, will, will, just, will just begin to manifest. In 1 Samuel 2.26, we are told that Samuel as he grew, found favor with God. And in 1 Samuel 3.19, to 20, soon after, it was recorded that as a result of God's favor upon his life, the entire nation knew that he was indeed God's prophet. As you live here today, you will go with divine favor. In the name that is above every other name. Basket number four, blessing. was the basket of abundance. That boy's small lunch of barley loads was food for the poor people of that time. And only God knows how precious that small lunch was to that boy. But at the end of the day, he had 12 baskets of them. Because 2 Corinthians 9, 6 tells us, that if you sow bountifully, you will reap bountifully. For someone to give his everything he had to God for his use, such a person, no matter the size of that which he has given, he has sown bountifully. From today onward, if you will dare sow bountifully, Bountifully to God. As from this moment, your harvest will always be bountiful in the mighty name of Jesus. Basket number five. If last month you received a negative report from your hospital regarding your health, and then all of a sudden Jesus came in your dream and smiled at you, go back to the hospital. And you will, you will see that the report that they will give you will be different from the one they gave you last month. I'm praying for someone here this morning that God will give you a giant testimony here today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because by the time you leave here this morning, you will not live here with the same condition of health you came here with. When you have two people doing the same thing, it is the one that does their own with a difference that will become the center of attention. You all know the story of the blind Bartimaeus in Mark 10, 45 to 46 to 52. He was a beggar on the roadside when he heard that Jesus, the healer, was passing by. He cried out to him. And the people around him tried to silence him. He cried out even louder. In verse 47, it says, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me until he obtained divine favor when our Lord Jesus Christ called him and chose to restore his eyesight. Then all of a sudden, he immediately became the center of attraction. All of you here this morning that have been forgotten, that they have relegated to the side of the road, either by your family or by your friends. And you are here this morning. In the name that is above every other name, from today you will become the center of attraction. In the mighty name of Jesus. Basket number seven. That boy, by providing his lunch to Jesus, automatically became a divine partner. Because without him, nothing would have happened. There is no doubt that Jesus could have turned stone into bread in order to feed the multitude. But had he done so, he would have placed the devil who attempted Jesus to turn stone to bread. 
But if he did so, what happens to this boy? Who says, take my bread and take my fish? And when he did so, the one whose name is bread of life had something to work with. And thus the boy became a divine partner with the Lord. I want to believe today that as someone is willing to release to God, to give to God this morning, from today you will become his divine partner. You will become his divine treasurer in the mighty name of Jesus. You know there are great benefits in being a divine partner. And one of them is that you are guaranteed permanent victory. When you become a divine partner, it means God is your partner. He has your back. And Romans 8.31 tells us that if God be for us, who can be against us? With the almighty God as your divine partner, there is absolutely nothing on anyone who can stand in your way of success. That is why if you are a divine partner, I pity anyone who decides to attack you because they are in serious trouble. Not that God is behind you. From this moment onward, it will be victory all the way for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Basket number eight. That this boy took home that day became was that he became a blessing to his family. When he left home, he left home with a small lunch. But by the time he returned, there was abundance of food for the entire family. There are sons and there are sons. There are sons that cause sorrow and there are sons who bring reproach to the family and there are sons who bring blessings to the family. My prayer for each and every one of you here today is that you will be a blessing to your family in the mighty name of Jesus. And that your children will bring blessings to you in the mighty name of Jesus. In Acts chapter 4, verse 36, we are told about a man who's given who was given the name Joseph. The Bible's disciples called him Barnabas, which means person who encourages or someone versions, or some Bible versions say son of consolation. That's the meaning of the name. From today, you will be a child of consolation to your family in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm praying for someone here today. I don't know who you are. But that I'm praying that in the name that's above every other name, to you, the name of your family shall not just be known in Nigeria, but throughout the entire world in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe that God can do it for you, stand up and shout hallelujah. In fact, give God a mighty clap offering this morning. Amen. Basket number nine. Was that the boy got a divine surprise? God will surprise somebody this week. The boy got a good surprise because how can 12 baskets of food come from one little lunch of five loaves of bread and two small fish? I told you before that God is a God that we see in Exodus 17, 1 to 6, in the story of how God brought water out of the rock. He didn't just squeeze a little water, but more than enough water for a whole nation to drink. I'm prophesying to someone. People may think that you are poor. 
and they may think that you are a dry rock. But out of you, in the name that's above every other name, we come blessings not for your community alone, not for your family alone, not for your state alone, but for the whole nation in the mighty name of Jesus. I am prophesying specifically to a woman here today. One that the world considers barren. That out of your dry womb will come someone, somebody who will be a blessing to the whole nation in the mighty name of Jesus. Basket number 10. Now that boy carried them was a basket of joy. Somebody will go home with great joy today. You don't need to be a prophet to know that that boy's joy must have been full on that day. He could not wait to get home to show his parents the 12 baskets of bread and fish that he has brought home. First and foremost, he had the great opportunity and the honor of meeting our Lord Jesus Christ. Can you imagine his reaction, beloved? He left his house with small lunch to go and sit with the multitude of people, thousands of people, with the hope of catching a glimpse of our Lord Jesus Christ. The next thing he was standing face to face in front of him. He is not only providing seed for one of the greatest miracles ever recorded, but he is introduced to Jesus the great miracle worker himself. I just want you to imagine this scenario. Imagine the Queen of England is coming to Nigeria now. Along with hundreds of thousands of people. And you line the streets to maybe see her face pass by. Then all of a sudden someone calls you and you find yourself standing in front of the Queen. As she smiles at you and talks to you, I prophesy that someone present in this meeting today will dine with presidents of the biggest countries of this world in the mighty name of Jesus. If you believe God can do it for you, shout hallelujah. In Isaiah 9.3, the Bible talks to us about the joy of harvest. That boy had a great day. That day, because he had come into the presence of the king of kings, that day was a special day for him. Just because he sold a small lunch, he harvested and experienced the joy of harvest. I pray today, that as you give your offering, you will experience the joy of harvest in Jesus' name. <laughs> Basket number 11. The fact that we are reading about him now and future generations will also read about him means that that boy got mentioned in the book of life. What can be as wonderful as that? Those who ate the food were not mentioned. Those of you who like to come to church, just receive, 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 collect, 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 collect. Those when it comes to giving, it is difficult for them to give. They will be given, but nobody will remember them. Even the heavens have no record of them. But the ones who have turned themselves to instruments of blessings in the hands of God, the Bible says the heavens will never forget them. Remember the story of Cornelius. It was to his given that he got the attention of the Almighty. And when he got God's attention, 
everything changed for him. Salvation that was cast in his family became was offered to him free of charge. The parents of the boy, listen carefully, who gave the fish and the bread We are not mentioned in the Bible. Nobody remember them. Are you following me? May I use this opportunity to once again talk to children and youths? It is never about my father or my mother. What they did, my father, do you know who my father is? Do you know who my father is? Or do you know who my father was? Some people, they boast in past glory. My father used to be, in the days of my father, we had this, he used to do this, he used to do that. What are you doing? My father did this, my father did that. It was recorded for your father. What are we recording for you? My mother used to do this. My mother used to do that. What are you doing? The world is tired of us saying, do you know the God of Elijah? Elijah called them. They want to see the evidence of the God that you and I are calling today to us. Am I making sense to you? Don't boast in your parents' ability. But concentrate on yourself. What are you doing? The Bible did not talk about the parents. Am I making sense to you? At the end of the day, the race of salvation is personal. Are you following me? The Bible did not talk about his friends. The boy must have friends. It was the time that used to consult friends. Should I release it or not? Maybe they would have told him not to release it. For those of you who listen to friends and people when it comes to doing the things of God, if you do it, they won't mention your friend. If you fail to do it, they will also not blame your friend. It is you. You are the direct recipient of whatever you do or don't do. The harvest. You are the direct recipient of the harvest. Whether good or bad. Am I making sense to you? But today, we are reading about the boy in the Bible. We are told in Revelation 2015 that those whose names we are not found in the book of life, we are thrown into the fairy lake. That boy did not end up in the fairy lake. That's why I'm praying for everyone here this morning. That when your own time is up too, your name will be found in the book of life. And we will all end up in heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. Basket number 12. Was that the offering he gave was accepted. The offering he gave was accepted. If you look at the percentage of the offerings that is acceptable in the sight of God in church every Sunday, you will be surprised that it may be very little. Even though we thought we had given, but God may not have accepted it. Maybe out of all of us that gives, maybe it's only 5% or 10% that God accepts. Because we have not given according to his expectations of us. And maybe the small child that give, or poor person that give that 10 naira, 
is the one that God will be among the 5% that God has sent their offering. Am I making sense to you? See, let me tell you something, beloved. When God wants to bless you, he first of all makes the provision for you to be blessed. What you need to get blessed, he has given you. The, on, the only thing that is that do you have enough wisdom to recognize that that is what is in your hand? Or you think it's your own? Am I making sense to you? Are you following me this morning? His offering was accepted. For God to reject your offering, it means you yourself have been rejected. That's why you must take every necessary caution to make sure that whatever you do in God's presence, you do it rightly. Starting from your worship, your attitude, your behavior, even obeying divine instructions, following, listening to the directions of the usher, and not playing yourself above the authority that God has placed above you. Everyone in position in this ministry, either in ushering or in deliverance or in children's church, are in authority because they represent the authority that God has placed by the church. They are acting on instructions. So you are supposed to listen to them. Are you following me this morning? And if by one way or the other we have done something that will make us God reject us, either through our character or our or our pride or our arrogance, it means even our offering, God will reject. Are you following me this morning? If you don't give your offering correctly, it means you are only just giving your money to the ushers. You didn't give to God. But when you give your offering correctly and God accepts the offering, then that means he has accepted you as a person. We must equally teach this principle and correct concept of giving offerings correctly even to our children. Are you following me? One day among the children, I was told that as one child was given, another child was taken. He didn't know any better. I mean, parents have work in their hand. Are you following me? Am I making sense to you? Such a child can bring a problem to the whole family. It was a child that gave everything he had and he brought blessing to his family. And another child come and want to be stealing from God. What does he want to take to his family? This was just about two, three weeks ago. Beloved, those are the twelve baskets the boy carried home. The question I want to ask you this morning is this. What are the twelve baskets waiting for you to carry home today? What are the twelve baskets that God wants you to carry home today? God wants you to carry home a basket of physical blessings. In Psalm 107 verse 20, the Bible says he sent his message and healed them. He rescued them from their grave. By the reason of your being here this morning and hearing this word of God, you already have a basket of blessing. Because God's word will not return to him void. The word that you hear this morning will heal you. Will heal your spirit. Will heal your soul. In the mighty name of Jesus. Will turn your life to abundance. In the mighty name of Jesus. Where you are experiencing lack. You will receive multiplication. I know that by the grace of God. Many of you are not sick. 
and you will not get sick in the name of Jesus. But for those who may be sick, I told you earlier this morning that cancer, the day it manifests in the body is not the day it starts. And so I have several other diseases. The body of a woman can store some infirmities in their body for 20, 30 years and they will still be normal. Whereas if, it goes to the, if a man should have a contact with them, he's dead. The moment he does it. Three days later, he's in trouble. Whereas the woman can carry it for years. You may think you are healthy, yet something may be going wrong. For anyone in that situation this morning, you may not even know that anything is wrong in your body. But because you are here today, and because you are hearing this word, direct and live, and because the word of God says he sent his word and he healed them, in the name that is above every other name, I declare that you are healed in Jesus' name. I declare that you are healed in Jesus' name. Receive your healing in the mighty name of Jesus. The second basket that you will go home with today is material blessing. As a result of the law of harvest, there is absolutely no doubt that if you sow, you will surely reap. As you sow this morning, as you give unto the Lord this morning, the law of harvest shall work for you in Jesus' name. The third basket that you will carry home is mental blessing. All the students in the sanctuary, please stand up. If you work in the office or operate your own business, please also stand up. Now, why will you have a mental blessing? Because you are here this morning. How come you can have mental blessing? Because you came here today to hear the word of God. Because we are told in Psalm 119 verse 130, your word is a doorway that lets in light and helps gullible people to understand. The Bible did not want to say stupid people, so it used the word gullible. Some versions use the word simple. When the word of God comes to you, even as you are seated and listening to his word, wisdom comes in. That's why I pray for each and every one of you standing and everyone seated too. That in the name that is above that name, receive wisdom. To succeed in life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever you do from now on. Shall succeed in Jesus mighty name. If you have received it. Shout hallelujah. Sit down please. Some very old time Christians. Used to wrongly believe that. If you are rich. You will go to hell. Why being poor and lowly was a ticket to heaven? It was hearing through the word of God that wisdom came and we realized that the entrance to heaven is determined by holiness and not by poverty. Many people have purposely died poor in their bid to make heaven, but the entrance of his word brought light and understanding and wisdom to them. I prophesy again to you this morning. The wisdom to succeed in your education. The wisdom to succeed in your place of work. The wisdom to succeed in your business. The wisdom to succeed in your marriage. The wisdom to succeed in every area of your life shall come on for you now in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. It is yours in the mighty name of Jesus. 
There are many stories of people. I had decent jobs in corporate offices. And some that had no job at all, even with their university degrees. But at some point in time, they had the word of God. They received some wisdom with it and proceeded into a line of business that initially people laughed at them, thinking that they were foolish. But by the end of the day, that same business they started, which caused people to laugh at them, became very successful. Some of them that could not even afford to pay children's school fees or less than, of less than 20,000 naira ended up sending their same children to school in Europe. There was a young man who had no job but a university degree. He woke up and started to sell roasted plantain on the roadside. His own roasted plantain was different from other people's own. And before you know it, restaurants and hotels were paying him to prepare hundreds for them on a daily basis. In less than four months, he bought his first car. And in less than one year, he built a house. And from selling roasting plantain, the inspiration that God will give you today and praying will take you to the very top in the mighty name of Jesus. All by selling roasted plantain, that man became great. If you believe that God will do it for you also too, shout a glorious hallelujah. Yours may not be roasted plantain. Yours will be something that's entirely. All you need is that inspiration and divine instruction and guidance. Go and do this. And as you proceed to do it, you begin to climb your ladder of success. So shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to let you know, beloved, that what I've just said to you, God did in my life. And if he has done it for me, is a proof that he can do it for you. And he's able to do it. If you believe so, shout hallelujah. As I round up this morning to continue next week, on this same message, 12 baskets of blessing, let me tell you another basket that is waiting for you to take home today. Last week we went home not too happy because we know what we have done. Many of us, we are not happy. I, particularly, I was not happy. I spent the whole night praying to God. And one of the prayers that I prayed to God this one is that, Father, let today be different. That's why today, another basket that you and I will take home today is a basket of joy. Someone today who have been crying, you will no longer cry again. Someone from today, joy will always be your portion. Why am I saying the basket of joy is available for us today? Because we have chosen to come to God's presence despite everything. Despite everything, the Bible says, in God's presence, there's fullness of joy. If we are to look at our situations, if we are to look at the state of our finances, if some of us are to pay attention to our living condition, some people did not sleep throughout the night because there was no light. If some of them was telling me that this morning he woke up, he was looking for water to bath and that's why he came late to church. Different issues, different circumstances. The devil has programmed in our lives to make sure that coming to church will be impossible, that we will not even be interested in coming before God's presence. But because we dare come to his presence and because there is joy in his presence, as we are going home today, we will go with basket of joy. If you believe so, shout hallelujah. (laughs) 
Psalm 16 verse 11 tells us that complete joy, not partial joy, not small joy, but total joy is in the presence of God. When I say total, when I say complete, I mean joy in every area of life. That's what we are taking home tonight, this evening. That's what we are taking home this afternoon. Every one of us here today will go home with a basket full of joy. Joy in every area of our life. Where our finances is concerned, where our health is concerned, where our children is concerned, suddenly you will just become happy. You may not know why you are happy, but you become happy. Shortly afterwards, you begin to see the reason why you are happy. Because from your phone, from your email, from your text messages, good news shall begin to flow in. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever problem you have come here with today, in the name that's above every other name, the ground swallow up and take them. In the mighty name of Jesus. The ground will open up and swallow them up. You are going here, out of this place this morning, trouble free. Problem free. In the mighty name of Jesus. There is a man here today. The solution to the problem of your finances, receive it now in Jesus' mighty name. the fact that your wife has been the one carrying and has been sustaining the family as from today is over. You shall take up your role again. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you have received that for yourself, shout hallelujah. If you know you are living this place, a joyful person, shout hallelujah. This is where we end this morning. Let us bow down our heads and begin to talk to God.